Hi, I'm Andy Hawk, Medical Director of CareFlight Air and Mobile Services, Miami Valley Hospital and Premier Health in Dayton, Ohio. I'm here to show you my quick, rapid trauma survey in the multiple trauma patient. I brought a multiple trauma patient with me here. He's obviously supine, has a C-collar already placed, and I'm going to initiate my exam and my interaction with him. I do five questions. My first question is, I ask the patient what their name is to interact and to start our introduction and to move forward. Number two, I ask the patient if they're having trouble breathing because I'm concerned obviously initially primarily about their airway and breathing. The third question I ask the patient is, are you able to wiggle your toes? That gives a higher cognitive question and also makes sure that the person isn't totally paralyzed, although that doesn't examine their back or prove that they don't have a spinal cord injury. The fourth question I ask is a general question, are you having pain anywhere else? And I follow that with the infamous question of, are you on aspirin, Plavix, Coumadin, or any other blood thinner? Because I'm concerned about bleeding. I initiate my exam by examining the head and the face. Obviously, I'm looking for bleeding or swelling or any airway compromise. My next step is to check out the neck. In this collar, spinal motion restriction is being maintained and a cervical collar has been applied. I still have the ability to look at the neck, looking for JVD or tracheal deviation or swelling. I also like to hear the patient's voice if they're able to talk to make sure there's no problems with that situation. I then examine the chest. I start at the shoulders. I run the shoulders in over the clavicles and the upper ribs. I check their sternum. I come around their costochondral margin and I squeeze their ribs. At that next point, I put my stethoscope in my ears. I listen to both sides of their chest. During this time, I'm looking for unequal chest rise. I'm looking for signs of unequal breast sounds that would signify a, pinch, or a pneumothorax or a hemothorax. I'm also making sure during this time that there's no obvious JVD or loss of breath sounds totally, which would indicate possible tension pneumothorax. And then I move down and check a radial pulse and capillary refill looking for circulation problems. And that's my quick trauma survey and evaluation looking for initial life threats and signs of shock or airway compromise.